Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you are all having a great day today. Uh, I've had a cold that's been preventing me from talking into the camera consistently. All of that is gone and this is a long overdue video that I'm just trying to uh, get out to all of you. So this video is about switching from fluorescent lights here in my shop to LED lights and actually showing you the complete comparison because I still have the fluorescents hooked up for the sake of this video. The LEDs are fantastic. It is such a, such a, it's like a different shop. It's, it's totally different to work in here based upon the lighting and I couldn't be any happier. With the opinion out of the way, I want to get the opinion out of the way, be as least biased as possible going forward. Uh, full disclosure, this isn't sponsored by anybody. I'm not making anything on the, any of these products or anything on this video directly related to the products. I have nothing to gain or lose, whether you do or do not buy anything from American Green Lights. However, I did reach out to Jim at American Green Lights and ask to be provided all of the LEDs to upgrade my shop in exchange for not sharing my opinion, which I just gave to you, but more importantly than that, giving you actual results. I still have the fluorescence hooked up so I can switch back and forth and show you A and B results, A and B comparison to, to really show you the actual difference rather than just, hey, hooked up lights and they're great. So <clears throat> with that being said, um, a little bit about my space. This is a approximately 20 foot by 20 foot or 20 and a half by 20 and a half foot garage, two car garage with 10 foot walls. So my ceiling is 10 feet off the ground. And my initial plan or objective with lighting in the shop since day one has always been to have as much light in the ceiling as possible. That way I don't have to worry about any camera lights or any light stands or clip on lights or anything. Uh, as I'm working here in the shop because honestly the most important tool that I have is my camera and good lighting really makes a difference so as much light in the ceiling as possible to make my job a little bit easier moving the camera around and, and positioning stuff. My fluorescent fixture or fluorescent setup is six eight foot fixtures each one of those eight foot fixtures has four 32 watt T8 bulbs. I have two eight foot fixtures running parallel to the garage door in the position to where if the garage door is open, the lights are above it and then they're on a separate circuit to where I can shut those off when the garage door is open. The other four eight foot fixtures are running perpendicular to that in the space that is pretty much open regardless of the position of the door. And again, those are on a separate circuit. So if the door is open, then I can just turn these on. So that's 24 bulbs each one of those bulbs is 32 watts that's 768 watts of fluorescent lighting the switch for the leds what we did here is there's four 24 watt panels in the center of the shop and then 10 48 watt panels along the perimeter a lot of my workstations here pretty much all of my workstations here are close to the perimeter of the shop or the garage and that gives really nice, even bright light at all of the perimeter workstations. And because the outside is brighter, I've got a lot of fill light that helps out these 24 watts in the middle. So uh, 10 48 watt panels, four 24 watt panels, that totals 770, I'm sorry, 576 watts for LEDs. So fluorescence, 768 watts, LEDs, 576 that's like 192 difference J just shy of 200 watt difference the LEDs use less electricity and as you'll find out in just a little bit they actually produce a lot more light or put a lot more light exactly where I want it to be so just to compare the two setups really quick um, <clears throat> again fluorescents use more electricity uh, but they're not as bright as the equivalent amount of electricity LED, or even less than that. Um, LEDs cost more up front, but are more energy efficient in the long run, and if I'm not mistaken, they have a longer um, usage life. And fluorescence costs less up front, but what we often fail to take into consideration is the residual cost that you have down the road, uh, meaning they cost more to run which is especially true the, the, the more you actually use the lights. And of course, they don't last as long, so you'll have to replace them eventually, more so or quicker than the LEDs. 
the biggest gripe by far that I've had, or the biggest problem that I've had here in the shop with the fluorescence is it's a light versus temperature situation. And what I mean by that is the colder it is here in the shop, the less maximum light output that the fluorescence will have. And that's true everywhere. Uh, so you may have noticed that some of my videos that were shot in the winter time are a little bit dimmer and I don't really pick up on it as well as I think I should have and should have bumped the exposure just a little bit. But besides that, um, fluorescents take a little bit of time to warm up to their optimal temp to their operating temperature and therefore they're dimmer right when you turn them on and then a little bit brighter uh, as they warm up. So with that said, I would waste a tremendous amount of electricity with these fluorescents because I would come out in the shop, turn the lights on, go back out to the office or whatever and work on something else while the lights warm up. That's just wasted electricity, but I need a consistent lighting in, in this shop for the camera. And also I think I have a couple ballasts going bad because once the shop or once the fluorescents were actually uh, up to operating temperature, if at that point I turned them back, turned them off and then turned it back on, and then also sometimes when they're cold, but most mostly when they were warm. If I would turn the fluorescence off and then back on, I'd have to flip the switch for, I don't know, a minute or two to try and get the uh, ballasts to all light up. I would always have one or two or three that just don't turn on all the way. and It, it was just a fuss. So to solve that, I just left them running. Once they were on in the morning, I would let them run all day and I could conveniently come out to the shop and do what I need to do, go back inside, maybe dump the files back onto my computer back and forth. And, and if I had to run to the store or something, I would, it was just part of the way that this was all set up to where you just leave them on. And that's just wasted electricity. There's no way around that. It's just wasted electricity. Contrary to that, these LEDs, there is no warm up time. It's just they're on and that's how bright they are or they're off and it's instant. So I've gotten back into the habit, which you should be anyway, to when I leave the shop, turn the lights off. When I come back on, turn them on. It's immediate. And just that alone, regardless of how much more energy efficient they are when they're running, just that alone will save a lot of electricity for me. So in my situation, that's a huge plus. And the second thing that is a huge plus for me, and it should be for you too, is it's more accurate colors. LEDs have a higher CRI, which is color rendering index. The higher the CRI value, the more true to life and the more accurate colors you will actually see because they're not being polluted by a lower CRI light. And what I mean by that is these fluorescents have a lower CRI value. I don't know what they are, but fluorescents typically emit a lot more green on the color spectrum than everything else. And I did not put my phone on silent like a dummy. <clears throat> so the fluorescents have a lower CRI and therefore uh, these emit a lot more green and just pollute everything with green. So everything had a green hue or green tint to it that is somewhat noticeable to the eye, uh, especially when you switch back and forth, then it's really noticeable. But as you get in here and you get used to it, it's somewhat noticeable, but the camera sensor always picks it up. Back when I was using my other camera, different brand and everything, uh, that I always had to bump the gr bump the magenta in the camera to offset the green and this one with the fluorescence I have to bump the camera to offset the green as well however in this particular shot you're looking at right now I'm being lit by the LED lights and they are 5000k uh, color output and I've got the white balance set to 5000k uh, there's no color correction at all that's just what the lights are so that's fantastic. I've never had that before. That's great. It's like shooting outside in, in bright light. So that's all the uh, small stuff here on my list. Uh, like I said, I'm going into greater detail on the website article. I don't know if I said that or not, but the website article for this video, I'll go into greater detail on some other stuff. And now I need to, um, what I want to do is actually take light readings, um, measure the amount of light on all the workstations around here in the shop with the LEDs, which are again, instant light, no need for them to warm up. And then I'll take two readings with the fluorescent. The first one is right when I've turned the fluorescent lights on, I'll take a reading just to show you how dim they are. And then I'll come back 20 minutes later after they've warmed up and take a second reading to show you that how much lighting changes. And while I do all that, the only thing I'm going to change on the camera is the white balance. 
Uh, I'm not going to change the exposure. The exposure is set for the brighter LEDs. So just looking uh, at the video, you'll, you'll be able to, to tell how much of a brightness difference there are between the two light sources. And the reason I didn't have my phone on silent, or the reason I have my phone out here in general, is what I'm going to use to measure the light is an app called Light Meter. I have an Android phone, and this is just a free app off the, uh, the uh, App Store, Play Store, whatever it is. It's called Light Meter, and it uses the proximity sensor on the phone to measure how much light is being emitted to that source. So if I can, I can just set it anywhere and get a value or a reading in lux, which is um, lumens, lux. It's basically how much light is being put onto a single source. It just measures the light output. So there is a calibration setting with this app and I'm not going to calibrate anything. This is just right after I've, I've downloaded it to my phone. And the reason being is I'm not looking for an absolute value. I'm just looking for a relative value. This compared to that. And I'll just set it in place on, I guess, all of my major workstations here. So we'll do uh, this workbench, the jointer, the bandsaw, table saw, that workbench, and then I guess we can do the miter saw station. Although, I, no matter what, I'm always in the shadow when I use this just because of the way that all of this is. So, let me move the camera and we'll get started. I'm going to start here at the workbench and I'll just use the leg vise chop as a reading. I'm also going to try and like bend out of the way so I'm not casting a shadow onto the meter. 11.06 is the highest reading at the workbench. 9.85 is the highest reading at the jointer. 1053 is the highest reading at the bandsaw. 11.52 is the highest reading at the table saw. I'll use this knot for reference right here. 11.99 is the highest reading at the pine workbench. 7.60 is the highest reading at the miter saw. And I kind of purposefully put it right against the fence and underneath the blade. So that's kind of in a shadow at all times when you're making a cut anyway. So I don't expect it to be rather, I don't expect it to be rather bright right there. All right, so now I'm going to switch the white balance on the camera and then switch over the uh, from the LEDs to the fluorescence. I switched the camera from 5000K for these LEDs to 6500K, which is what is stamped on the outside of the fluorescent bulbs. These are still LEDs, but keep in mind that the colors are so wrong with these with the fluorescence that I've never been able to use the 6500K uh, setting on the camera with 6500K fluorescent bulbs. I actually use like 4900 plus three uh, on my magenta scale, so boosting magenta three. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it as 6500K because that's what is written on the side of the fluorescence. So. Let's go ahead and switch over really quick. I'll turn the LEDs off and then let's see, I can't find it. That is the two above the garage door and that's the six in the open space. So while they warm up, it's like 60 degrees in here. Uh, really quick, right here at the workbench, 445, 330 at the jointer, 350 at the bandsaw, and it's steadily rising, so I can tell these lights are starting to warm up a little. 553 at the table saw, using that same knot for reference. 540 at the workbench, pine workbench. 233 at the miter saw. Now again, I'm going to I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes, leave the shop, come back and do the exact same thing with these fluorescents which should hopefully be brighter by that, by then. 15 minutes later, everything is should be as bright as it's going to be. The workbench over here is 701 
504 at the jointer, 496 at the bandsaw, 752 at the table saw, 700 at the pine workbench, 299 at the miter saw. All right, I'm still on the fluorescent fixture setup, and I wanted to show you the difference in diffusion, uh, the, the direction of the light between the fluorescents and LEDs. Uh, also, I haven't closed this box up here. This is for the LEDs. I just wanted to make sure the LEDs were placed properly before I close that. That will be closed probably today or tomorrow, so don't give me any flack for that, please. Uh, yeah, so the fluorescents, these, all of these fixtures did not come with any type of bell or any type of diffuser or any type of bulb housing so it's you know the fluorescent bulbs are emitting light a full 360 degrees of around the the tube so my thinking was that it didn't really matter anyway because you know the ceiling's white these fixtures are white the walls are white all of this light up here at the top should be able to reflect and produce an even lighting Yes and no. Uh, the thing is, a lot of this light spreads horizontally. So you'll see there's no need to light all this top of the wall, but it's nice and bright and lit up. When I switch over to the LEDs, the, all of these LEDs are, well, all LEDs are directional, meaning they only shine light in one direction. Put them in the ceiling, they shine light down. That's fine. Uh, but they do have, the, the kits that I have here, they do have... A bell or a housing I don't know what that's technically called but some type of little housing excuse me to reflect more of the light downward which the LEDs by nature are shooting down anyway so because of that when I switch over to the LEDs you'll notice a shadow line that is horizontal over here uh, due to these bells or housings and then this one, which runs perpendicular to the wall, casts kind of like a, a V shadow over here. So it kind of looks like it's there's harsh, harsher shadows with the LEDs, but in reality, they're, they're really just putting all the light down where it needs to be to begin with, not horizontally from the ceiling. So I'm going to switch over to the LEDs, and you'll be able to drastically see the, the difference on this wall. However... Due to the spread of the LED lights, there isn't any harsh shadows in any of my workstations, which is also a benefit. Proper white balance for the LEDs, once again. Well, 5000K, just like the lights are. And, like I said, you can see shadows up here and then over there, which doesn't matter because I'm not working up there. All of the light is shining down on the work surfaces where I want it, where I want the light to be. And, yeah, such a... Such a better quality of light, and it's brighter, and uses less electricity, so I'm super excited. And once again, this video is much longer than what I had anticipated, so... Uh, just to wrap it up really quick, big shout out to Jim from American Green Lights. Thanks for providing these lights to actually show an A-B comparison. And hopefully you can use that information to, ba to make a better informed decision for you down the road rather than just relying on an opinion. Uh, Jim also said that anybody who mentions this, this video or seeing these lights on my videos or on Instagram, uh, you'll get 10% off as well as free shipping. So if you are interested, then take them up on that. Once again, I don't have anything to gain or lose, whether you do or do not buy anything. Um, just is what it is. Um, I think that is it. If you want more information and some charts and graphs and such, check out my website article for this video. You guys take care. Have a great day. And I will talk to you next time. Finally got that. I don't know why it's so hard to talk to the camera sometimes, but it is.